weak ass physique. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Alright, Mr. so much. I tell you, we've had a wonderful tour thus far, and I know tonight is uh, not going to be any different. I know that you all are uh, bluegrass music fans. Uh, Canada has some of the strongest uh, fan base that we have anywhere. So God bless y'all. And the most wonderful venues. I can add that too. I like to do story songs, and I write a lot of uh, story songs. I didn't write this one. This one was uh, composed, I think, by Miss Dolly Parton, and she uh, wrote this for, uh, yeah, everybody loves Dolly. You can't beat Dolly. Uh, she composed this for a Kenny Rogers album. She never did record it, I don't think, but it's a good old story that uh, uh, probably a whole lot of people can relate to, and it reminds me of my grandmother's story and my mother's story. Uh, so, I hope y'all enjoy this song called The Stranger. One. 
Oh, this is my baby and my son. Yeah. He has a music major from Berea College, and, uh, and he comes out from time to time and, and plays, and I'm certainly glad to have gotten to spend two weeks with him. I don't get to see him as much as I used to. My son, John Bradley, on the bass. <laughs> All right, let's pick a little gold rush. that I loved uh, story songs and I like to write them and I'm from down in southeastern Kentucky down on the Tennessee and the Virginia border in fact honest to goodness my, my yard uh, if you walk uh, just a little distance you're in Virginia and then the other way you're in Tennessee so maybe if you all uh, come down that way to Gatlinburg Tennessee Pigeon Forge you've passed right to really right past my house well, coal mining is the way of life. Has been uh, for so long. Of course, now it's it's dwindling, dwindling out. And uh, there's been times that it's had its ups and downs. And this is a story about that very thing. Uh, this took place in the in the 40s. And my, my family told me this story. There was a family that lived in one of the head of the hollers up there where we're from. They had about nine kids. And the dad decided he wasn't going to mine coal for a living no more. It was dangerous and you didn't get paid much got paid in your script, you know, and you gave it back to the company and all that. So he, they did have a battery radio that they listened to, and he had heard on the news where they were making orange juice down in Florida. And he had a whole barn full of corn. Two seconds. You all are the winners. I told it in Kentucky one time, it took 15 seconds for them to know. I was embarrassed, I tell you. But he had a 12-year-old son that was his leading distributor. And they had an old beat-up vehicle of some kind. They'd put cushions so he could see over top of the steering wheel. And I always wondered how he worked the clutch and the brake and all that. But they put blocks on his shoes. He would figured how to do that, you know. Well, his name was Rufus, and this is called Run, Rufus, Run. <laughs> last year and it's got three different scenarios in it. First is about a soldier who gives his all for his country. Second scenario is about a young girl who's so much in love that she is just uh, can't listen to the, the wonderful advice that her father is trying to give her. No 
Mm, it happens. Mm, mm, mm. And then the third is about a young fellow so wrapped up in himself that when his world goes away, everything falls apart. But I don't know where we would be without these three, uh, three kinds of people. That's soldiers, lovers, and dreamers. Thank you. Well, Greg and I are going to exit the stage, and I can't promise you what's going to happen because I won't be in control. But I'm going to turn it over to uh, John and Barry, and let's see what they got cooked up for you. why she can still play with them. <laughs> we just had yeah, one off. Yeah. And she was fine. She just said if I was a little younger, I'd be all over that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've had but, one off. Ain't bad been a week. Bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Making progress. Progress. Well, we're going to do a number for you, me and Barry. Uh, you might have seen it with Earl Scruggs and Jake Tillich on bass back in the 1960s on their show called Little Darling Palomine. Hope you enjoy it. Right. Let's go. Twist everything you got, buddy. <laughs> Do you? <clears throat> we're going to play Name That Tune. So we're going to do this song and see if you can name this tune. Ready? One, two, three, four. Sometimes I want to throw. 